Hello, a few days back I made a podcast for Beacon on the topic of milk inflation in India. How the milk farmers produced a lot of milk during the Covid times but the demand wasn't that much which is why the prices dropped and as a result of that the farmers became discouraged until they sold their cows, they stopped milk production that much, they stopped investing in animal husbandry and today we don't have that much supply of milk but the demand has risen which is why milk inflation is happening. On similar lines, today we have tomato inflation and the explanation that I shall give will be valid for nearly every agricultural crop which is not subsidized by the government in one form or the other, which works on market economics more or less. So for the case of tomato, let me bring it into perspective. There are two seasons in which tomato is grown in India. One is the Khar for the summer season, one is the Rabi or the winter season. In Khar season, it is sown in July, harvested after about three months. Then again it is sown in November, harvested again about after three months. So last year in 2022, when it was sown in July, the farmers had a lot of enthusiasm and they sowed a lot of tomatoes and they were expecting a lot of remunerative price from the market. After three months in October, September when they sold it to the market, uh, they got one rupee or two rupees a kilogram and they were extremely discouraged. After all that effort, they were getting only 2 rupees a kilogram or even less because that's what the customers bought at. Then you had the middlemen putting all their margins. So the farmers decided that in the next season in November, they will shift to other vegetables. Some of them even shifted to rice and there wasn't that much enthusiasm about tomatoes because they, they became circumspect about the prices that they would get after harvest. So in November, a lot of them sold cauliflower and brinjals, other vegetables. So what ha really happened is that in March, April, we didn't have too much of tomatoes in the market. For one or two months, the cold storage and the reserves helped. But now in June, July, those reserves have dried up and we have shortage of supply of tomatoes and high prices because the demand is fixed. The demand was fixed back then and the demand is fixed right now. But the supply has gone up and down. So, because the supply has gone down right now, we have tomato inflation. Now that there is 80 rupees, 100 rupees a kg at which tomato is being sold in the market, the farmers might see that it is a profitable business. So now in July 2023, they might be encouraged to sow tomatoes. Now they'll sow a lot of tomatoes and maybe in October this year, the market will be flooded with tomatoes. At that point of time, they won't be getting 80 rupees a kg. At that point of time, the price might drop again to single digits, maybe 10 or 5 rupees a kg. And again, the farmers will become discouraged. So this cycle will keep on continuing. And the demand is fixed, all right? But the supply is going up and down, up and down. Now, supply won't go up and down in the case of rice or wheat, sorry, paddy or wheat. But why is it fluctuating here? Because in the case of paddy or wheat, we have MSP, which the farmers are getting as an assured income from the government. But in the case of tomatoes or milk or many other vegetables, we don't have MSPs. So the farmer looks at the mood of the market and decides. So I was inspired to make this analysis episode uh, because of an article in Times of India, which was published a couple of days ago, where it has been mentioned that the farmers sow based on the harvest price that they got in the last season. That is the immediate motivation for the farmer as to whether to sow tomato or potato or onion or any other vegetable or wheat or rice or what. So that is the immediate motivation. That is why the supply keeps fluctuating season to season. So our aim in this country has to assure the farmers that they will get a market. They will get remunerative prices. They have to keep the supply more or less stable. Now, if they manage to keep the supply more or less stable, we won't have these seasonal fluctuations in volatility. But if the farmer has produced a lot of tomatoes, all right, hit the ceiling of the yield, and there isn't enough demand in the market, if we have a very strong and robust food processing and value supply chain, food processing industry, They'll be able to convert it into tomato paste and puree and tomato sauce and that has a longer shelf life. So 
the farmers will be able to sell there and get a good price not one or two rupees a kg but maybe 20 30 40 rupees a kg and they will be encouraged to reserve and preserve the portion of the farmland for tomatoes so some portion of the farmland will be earmarked otherwise if i see tomatoes in the field today uh, maybe if i go in the next season i might see some other vegetable so that uncertainty will vanish if we have a robust uh, infrastructure for food processing industries and that is something which is lacking in India. On the top of that I have to say that tomatoes just like many other perishable agricultural products and vegetables doesn't encourage a good buffer stock. What, what do I mean by that? Because tomatoes are perishable it's not wise it's not prudent it's not plausible to have a very large reserve of buffer stock just like we have in the case of crude oil. We also have forex reserves, but we can't have that much reserves in tomato. Plus, tomato is a short grain crop, grows in two or three months. So the supplies keep on coming, keep on coming. It's not wise to store it. We can store the processed items, but not tomato. Similar logic holds good for the case of milk. So we have to find these alternate channels. It's not just raw tomatoes that should be sold, we should have a processing industry and then we can also look for export into the international market and that can open new avenues. So tomato farmers will have a certain sense of certainty and trust me, they will play their part. And in the case of any agricultural commodity, let me say, there is something called supply, something called demand and the price mechanism bridges them in between. So the time period in which a fluctuation in the supply causes a fluctuation in the price. It's very quick in the case of agricultural products, tomatoes and other vegetables because of this lack of buffer reserve. So we have to ensure that alternate channels are available to the farmer. For the consumer as well, if the consumer doesn't demand, for example in the case of milk during the coronavirus, the demand side suddenly dropped and very soon the prices were affected and that affected the supplies. So in the case of agriculture we have to have these channels because the response of price to changes in demand and supply is real quick. And I have told about the, how the brain, how the mindset, how the attitude of a farmer works uh, that he sees the price that he has got in the last harvest season based on that he decides how much to sow. So it's completely man-made, it's completely artificial, the rainfall, the weather, nothing has played a role. But sometimes we might have a bad rainfall which might result in low production and consequent inflation. And we have had seasons in the previous years where onion production has dropped because of bad monsoon or a lot of monsoon. So we have to ensure that in such cases at least, inflation is prevented uh, because weather is unpredictable, all right? So if we can have polyhouse strategies, polyhouse farming, in which the temperature is controlled, irrigation is controlled, sunlight is controlled, pressure is controlled, ingredients are controlled, the farmer can literally predict what is the amount of production that he will have at the end of the harvest season. And the yields will be much higher. Yields will be three, four, five times higher than what we have today. Many countries have adopted, but that adoption is not so much in India. There are lots of reasons. The initial cost is high and the running cost might be low, but the initial cost is high. A good amount of professional training is required. So all of those factors have to be encouraged somehow. And uh, we have to, uh, at the end of the day, draw parallels between different agricultural products. How the market economy functions because it's all the same. I just commented in one of my posts on social media a few days back that it is exactly similar logic which is causing tomato inflation today which caused milk inflation and even milk inflation is still continuing by the way and I'm telling you by October and November the tomatoes will flood the market and a similar cycle will happen but it is an El Nino year 
and we do not know whether if rainfall isn't up to the mark over the next two months, July and August, then the tomato production, uh, sorry, tomato production might still take a hit. All right, I've discussed a lot and it depends on you to understand and digest it all and meet you all in the next episode of Beacon. But before that, do follow, subscribe and share it with your friends. Otherwise, you're going to miss a lot of interesting topics, not just in agriculture, other portions of economics, but even geography, history, current affairs, polity, all lots and lots of topics are on the way. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.